Hello, this is John Tech Lock, and today I'm going to show you a pretty awesome video that involves this click free external hard drive that you see here right now. A click free hard drive comes with its own firmware, um, which means that you can't format it. And it's a pretty shitty software um, that backs up all your computers. Only problem is, you can't drag and drop files into it. You can't really do anything. The only good thing about it is the fact that it has 640 gigabytes of hard drive space. Um, but it's pretty much unusable because the software controls everything. And there's no way to remove the software because it is embedded into a chip, um, also known as firmware. Um, and it's on a logical board that is attached to the click-free Samsung hard drive that's inside. Uh, and I mean, it's it's a great piece of software for end users who don't need to drag files in. But even then, I just don't understand it. Um, but yeah, this this hard drive is almost indestructible. But you could break it apart. Um, I used a wrench just to pry it open on the sides. Uh, so as you can see right now, it's just a solid block of very hard plastic. Um, but I did break that top part out and you can see the little micro USB port that's exposed and um, pretty much that micro USB port is connected to a mother little small motherboard that's connected to the SATA ports of the hard drive um, and I use this wrench that you see here uh, just to pry it open and just break the top out now you're gonna see two lines two long vertical lines stretching from the top of the hard drive to the bottom and if I can get it to focus right there you can see it where my finger is pointing there is a huge long line um, and there's another one on the other side and you can see the top that I broke apart that's where I use my wrench as you can see here and I'm prying it open and um, just twist it out a little don't use too much force but at the same time don't be afraid to break the hard drive it's not gonna break I mean, all you're doing is bending the plastic um, but at the same time be fragile um, and understand that the parts of it are fragile and that piece right there will just pop up pop out of the damn hard drive and um, that's pretty much step one and now I'm just gonna quickly detach the top of it um, the whole thing is really easy to pry open and bam right there you see three LED wires um, and there's another wire that's hooked up to the USB port of the hard drive right there that entire green section is the bottom of the hard drive and um, it's pretty much a logical board and right there there's another green little thing that has the words press on it as well as two screws that you must remove um, and here I'm just showing you the wires that are connected you could just tear them off uh, but if you do that you're never going to be able to use the hard drive for the purpose of the click free software but I don't care and also there's a little piece of tape that you just got to remove so go ahead and remove that piece of tape it makes everything a little easier it gives you a little bit more flexibility because it allows the wires to spread evenly and spread apart from each other so you can just go ahead and unscrew the little green thing that I'm going to show you there so when you take the tape off you can pry the wires away if you want it's all up to you um, but that, this is what it looks like inside um, and just go ahead and take a screwdriver and unscrew those two screws right there and once you do that you will be able to go ahead and detach the entire thing um, <clears throat> now all that needs to be done is uh, you can push those screws out it's up to you I didn't really care about it you can push those entire two wires out of the way but all you have to do now is examine the hard drive and just take a look at it and understand that there are a couple of screws on it that you're gonna have to remove the first two screws you're gonna have to remove are the ones that I'm pointing right there there's two top black screws on a metal plate that's holding the entire thing intact go ahead and unscrew those two things um, Hopefully I can get this to focus right there. You can see two of them and unscrew them. There's another metallic screw that's silver that's inside that little square. Do not remove that. There is no need to remove it. Just go ahead and remove the two black screws as seen in the video. 
Now, um, this is a pretty awesome device. Um, hacking it was pretty damn easy. And just, you know, gotta get through that tough plastic enclosure. But once you do that, it's fairly easy. So I'm um, removing the second screw there. And you can see the four wires, the black, green, white, and red. Um, you could just attach them, detach them if you want. I didn't really give a shit. Um, just because I might want to use that uh, little logical disc board later on. Not that I care. Anyway, the two screws are out. And all you have to do now is start prying at the board and just pull it out. There you can see the micro USB. Um, and I'm pointing at some screws. If you want, you can remove them. Um, it might make it a little easier. I didn't really see... If I didn't really see anything um, too necessary to remove, but I mean, depending on certain models, you might have to remove that those screws. Uh, the one that I had, the 640 gigabyte version, you just, you know, it's pretty damn simple. Uh, there are a couple of other screws that you got to remove now. Um, right here, I'm going to show you um, that you can just start prying this entire uh, uh, hard drive out, and there is still another wire. Um, a little cable that's connected to another piece of uh, hardware and that hardware is taped on to the inside of the enclosure uh, so you can remove that fairly easily now there's a little tape over that screw it's golden you can go ahead and remove the tape and go ahead and remove the screw and there's another one right there it's directly across from the previous one and there's one all the way on the other side that is silver in color and here is the other one. So there's four screws in total that you got to remove. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and do it as well. All right, so I am taking off the screw. Um, that little hole, don't worry about it. Uh, just don't jam anything in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, go ahead and take off that little tape. Um, and start unscrewing. Now, there's a lot of, this This is a pretty ghetto version of a hard drive. I mean, they tape things on. It doesn't really look like they cared about it much. Um, but, yeah, go ahead and unscrew. It doesn't really matter which ones you unscrew first. Um, just go ahead. Make sure you have a small little Phillips screwdriver. Um, anything that you find in a uh, computer store, like a little toolkit, those screwdrivers work perfectly. The one that I'm using right now is an elect electrician's screwdriver. Um, so it works perfectly as well. So now I'm unscrewing the last Phillips screw that is holding the control board onto the hard drive. Now, which all you have to do is use some brute force and just pull it off the SATA connection. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. I just want to show you. Yep, there it is. Alright, so just start pulling it off, and if I can focus into this now, you can see that there's a, that it's connected via SATA, right there. Uh, that's perfect focus. All you gotta do is pull it down. Right, right there. That's all you have to do. Pull it down and the entire piece comes off, and there you have it. A beautiful Samsung hard drive. Um, 640 gigabytes, and it's just like a little small hard drive you find in a laptop. Um, or, you know, wherever, iMacs, iMacs have that same exact hard drive, kind of similar. Um, but yeah, pretty much all you need to do now is take a look at what you've done. You've taken apart the most important piece of hardware in this bullshit click-free device, um, that really bottlenecks you into using their own bullshit software. Um, and now you have full, complete control. You can go ahead and use that, that firmware that I'm pointing at right there. That's that's what controlled the entire fucking hardware. That entire hard drive was controlled by that little piece of firmware microchip that had uh, direct contact with the software that ClickFree makes. But now you can do whatever the hell you want with the hard drive. Now I'm going to show you in the next clip how to read or use that hard drive by using a device... Um, to read the SATA ports um, because you're going to need that otherwise you might just have 
to use a laptop or whatever. I use a SATA IDE to USB adapter that I'm taking out of the box right now. What it does is read internal hard drives. Um, there's a PETA connection and a floppy disk drive connection, but on the top you can see the SATA port right there. And that's what I'm going to use to read and write on this hard drive. So that SATA port is right there for the data and right next to it the longer SATA port is the SATA power connector. Um, which will allow me to power the hard drive using the same exact device. So that click-free box you can just throw away. Um, and yep, and I don't know what that little foam piece is, but I kept it there because it didn't really you know, do anything wrong. Now that razor blade you see right there, um, the reason why I had it on uh, the table was because I used it to pry open the enclosure and... Um, so just be careful, take a razor blade or something very thin and sharp and uh, I'm going to show you in the next couple of frames hopefully if the entire thing, there we go. Alright, so I'm going to put this back on and I'm going to show you what I did with that razor blade. Um, I used it, there were two lines, remember when I showed you two long par parallel ver vertical lines? Just use the razor blade and go straight through it and then the hard drive, you'll have access to the goddamn hard drive. Um, and the hard drive was on that logical board. Don't worry about digging into the plastic because the hard drive is not going to be entirely exposed because you're going to have that logical board. So just go ahead and slice straight through um, where the lines are. It's going to make it a little loose. And then go ahead and use the wrench to pry it open. Make sure it's tight. And then just go ahead and do some small little movements up and down or rotate the sides of the enclosure and you will be able to remove the enclosure fairly easily and that piece will pop up. That piece will be the first thing to pop off. If it doesn't pop off, pop off then you're probably not doing something right. Um, you might be able, you might be damaging the hard drive. So anyway, Samsung hard drive, um, the next couple of frames, I'm going to attach it to a computer um, via the USB adapter and we'll be able to take a better look at how to read the goddamn hard drive. So um, let's take a look at the hard drive itself. It's Samsung. Uh, it tells you the rating. Um, it tells you the model number 640 gigs at 5400 RPM and uh, it tells you the cache level as well. So you could potentially use this as a hard drive for an operating system. Um, and there you go. It has a SATA uh, logo right there. So this is actually a pretty powerful a hard drive and I can see this hard drive being used in a computer and in a laptop. Of course it's not 7200 RPM nor is it a um, anywhere near the level of a Seagate Momentus with hybrid technology. Um, but you took a hard drive out of an enclosure of uh, out of a piece of hardware that didn't really let you do anything. And um, the desk looks pretty goddamn cool right now. I like that shot. Alright, just bask in its glory. Alright, now I'm going to attach it to the computer. There is my little SATA cable that you attach to the top and my computer over to the left. Um, and there is my hard drive. We're just going to start attaching. Uh, that USB cable will go into your computer. So just go ahead and grab your hard drive now. I want you guys to be careful. I'm being a little careless um, just because I've grown insensitive toward towards my technology. Um, as long as you have that adapter... Uh, just make sure you're being careful with the hard drive. Anyway, there's the floppy disk drive port, which you could use if you wanted to, and then there's the old standard PETA for older IDE hard drives. Take that SATA cable that I'm holding in my hand, go ahead and attach it to the far middle left. So right in the middle, there's a little SATA connection. You're going to go ahead and attach that. And then, of course, the power connector needs to be attached as well. It comes with the device or any type of SATA reading device. You'll get that power connector. And take that USB cable and put it into your computer port. Um, it's USB 2.0, so it doesn't really matter which port you put it in, in newer model computers. And you're not going to see anything appear on your screen at first. Um, that's because device manager is going to start refreshing its own hardware that's being inputted. So I'm going to open up device manager and um, the entire computer will recognize this new device. Give it a couple of seconds because it's still a hard drive um, that needs to be 
um, installed, all the drivers need to be properly installed. I'm going to go into the um, disk drives in my device managers and I have another new listing called Samsung HM641J1 USB device which is this beautiful hard drive that's connected via this USB adapter taken out of this shitty uh, click-free backup system and um, forget about that no one needs that anymore you got a beautiful hard drive that you can do whatever the hell you want with um, now I'm just gonna go through the steps because it was kind of tricky to get everything working on the computer um, go ahead and open um, your computer uh, icon right now I went into device manager and um, before you can use the hard drive, you got to initialize the disk. And I think this might pop up in Windows 7 as well. I'm using Windows 8, so there's a higher level of security in this operating system. Um, but you got to initialize the disk. And um, you can just go ahead and hit OK. But I'm going to show you how I got to that. Go into your file explorer or um, wherever you have the computer icon. Because what you're going to do is right click on computer and hit manage. So you're going to go into the system tools of your Windows machine and um, you're gonna get this computer management dialog box um, window opened up and go ahead and double click on storage and then double click in disk management um, which is the virtual disk manager allows you to control the devices and this is gonna pop up it's gonna say initialize the goddamn disk you want to initialize it otherwise you will not be able to use it go ahead and hit OK and right there on the bottom you see a long black bar um, it's pretty much telling you that there is unallocated space that you need to format um, there's 596 gigabytes because it's reading it as NTFS. You could definitely format it um, as HFS Plus for Max, or you can go ahead and format it as FAT16 or FAT32, and you can get 640 gigabytes of space. NTFS is what I use because I'm using Windows. So right click and hit New Simple Volume right there. Go ahead and click it, and it's going to go through a uh, wizard. So go ahead and keep hitting, click, keep hitting Next. Sorry. Uh, so click next and format the hard drive. You can choose from NTFS from that little file system dialog entry. Um, go ahead and put a name for that hard drive. That can be changed later. I'm going to name it Samsung HD, I believe is what I'm going to call it. Sorry for the blur. I am using my left hand to hold the camera and my right hand to type. So go ahead and hit finish and it's going to initialize the entire process of formatting the hard drive. Um, and you can see the little spinning wheel. And um, any time now, the hard drive is going to be finished. And you will see right there, it's turning blue. Bam, Samsung HD. And up top, there is a hard drive right there that I can use um, to put store, put drives, to put programs and files and whatever the hell I want to put in there. And I just opened it in computer and the folder is empty currently because there is nothing on it. Um, but there we go. You can see now that I have two devices. And there is close to 600 gigabytes of space. The 40 gigabytes, like I said, you lose when you format an NTFS. But you can go ahead and format into whatever um, uh, formatting uh, thing that you want to use. FAT, I believe, will give you the entire 640 gigs, but I don't care. I'm fine with 500, fine with 600 gigs. But there it is. That hard drive is running, and you can hear it. If my audio is up, you'll be able to hear it. And now you have no no need to use this shitty entire enclosure. And, like, what is this goddamn two-inch USB thing? I hated this device. Like, that's the only reason I opened it up, because I um, hated it. But anyway, um, it was a pretty cool um, 20 minutes of time that I took to make this uh, entire process go smoothly and it worked in my first try so I'm pretty happy with the results um, in a scale of one to five in difficulty I would say this was a three um, so it's not too bad do not be afraid of breaking the click free device um, the plastic that is the hard drive is pretty fragile once you open up the enclosure but once you begin there's no going back so that's about it Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel so you can see more awesome video tutorials. Have a great day guys.